on CityCast Madison. When it comes to driving, Madison's not exactly the mean streets of New York or Chicago, but we do have some rules of the road. Ask anyone who's ever seen a car turn the wrong way onto university. Yeah. And don't get me started on all the summer construction. We wanted to get the best hacks for getting across town right now. So we needed to talk to somebody who's been around the block more than once or twice. Adam Churn's been a union cab driver for over three decades. He knows Madison. Producer Dylan Brogan sat down with Adam to get the insider's guide on getting around our town. It's Wednesday, August 16th. I'm Bianca Martin, and here's what Madison's talking about. Adam, thank you for joining us on CityCast Madison. Nice to be with you, Dylan. Okay, Adam, before we really get into the any driving tips, how would you describe Madison drivers generally? Do we have like a reputation? I don't know if we have a reputation. I think we have a mixed bag, which makes things uh, maybe a little bit more perilous. We have uh, big city drivers who've moved here from elsewhere who drive quickly, aggressively, and confidently. And we have a lot of drivers who are used to a slower pace of life, and I think the mix can sometimes create some dangers. Yeah, well, you would know you've been a cab driver for more than 30 years in town with Union Cab. So we brought you on because we really want to get your best Madison cabbie driving secret. So is there is there any uh, big tip you can give us that perhaps uh, people don't really know about? Well, I don't know if it's much of a secret, but if you're using your navigation apps, they'll almost always try and shut you on to something like the Beltline. And the fastest road is not always the fastest way to get to where you want to go. So the Beltline should not be your first thought. It can be a thought, but not your first thought. So what is like the fastest way across the Isthmus? First of all, John Nolan, again, is not always the answer because so much of the traffic goes there. So I find often Gorham is better. And with the recent change in speed limit on East Washington Avenue, city intended or not, um, they've created good alternatives in Williamson and the Johnson-Gorham thoroughfares, which if I were a resident on Johnson and Gorham or on Williamson Street, I wouldn't be that happy, but that's the way it is. The lights on East Washington make even the 25 mile an hour speed limit not particularly good. Yeah, well, we, there are a lot of problems on East Washington in terms of people going way too fast. Uh, you mentioned some of the things they've done. Do you think that kind of worked in slowing things down? Well, I think the intention was to make things safer for pedestrians, and it may have made things safer for pedestrians. I haven't seen the statistics on it, but what it definitely did was I think it pushed more of the traffic off of East Washington onto the Johnson-Gorham corridor and the Williamson corridor, which probably made things less safe for pedestrians and um, homeowners in those corridors. So just getting back to going across the isthmus, does it matter whether you're going east or west in terms of what you would advise people take in terms of Johnson or Gorham? Or? Well, what I would say is uh, going east, Johnson Street is wonderful. The lights are timed such that if you go a pretty moderate speed around the speed limit, one or two miles an hour over, you'll get largely green lights as you go through. If you try going much faster, you're just going to frustrate yourself having to stop at every stoplight. Truthfully, it's just going to take you so many minutes to get across the isthmus. And whether you do it stressing yourself out or you do it just taking things as they come, it's all about the same. And all of the lane changing and jockeying for position that happens on East Washington just makes it more dangerous and stressful for everyone. So we talked about maybe when to avoid the Beltline. Is there any good times to take the Beltline? Well, when you're going from somewhere near an exit to somewhere else near an exit, <laughs> that would be the obvious one. Uh, but it seems that with the uh, the extra lane that they've added on the, the Beltline there, there's definitely uh, speeds have increased greatly and not just to 55, but ru- routinely see the, the pace of traffic in the, the mid 60s and higher. Yeah, that flex lane is interesting. So that seemed to have helped a little bit with the traffic jams that we've seen on the Beltline historically. It does, but it also creates extremely high-paced traffic that approaches some inevitable log jams. For instance, if you're going uh, eastbound out of town on the Beltline, very often around Stoughton Road and the interstate, things really jam up there for some reason. 
And when you get the combination of people going 70 miles an hour and stop traffic up ahead, that seems like a real danger. Yeah. Well, what are typically like the worst traffic log jams for, for people who don't know? East Washington and Stoughton Road is a pretty big one. And also generally uh, moving north and south on Stoughton Road around Buckeye and Flom, those lights are just very long. There's a large volume of traffic trying to get through those. I never enjoy uh, traveling that route if I don't have to. On the west side, uh, the areas around Watts and Gammon, Beltline and Gammon, uh, you've just got a series of a whole bunch of stoplights. And even when the lights are are doing their best to keep things moving, it, it just seems to be a mess over there. So one thing, especially when you're trying to get somewhere, uh, a a train going by can put you in a situation where it's like, well, is there anything I can do to avoid this train? Can you outrun a train or uh, move around it quickly? Well, what I would say is uh, the best thing you can do is to keep your eyes far, far, far down the road. Um, There are times that you're heading out East Washington and, you know, you can be as far back as Patterson or something and You can see up ahead either brake lights or you can see the flashing railroad lights. And if you can get a a sense of which way that train is moving, you can get off of East Washington before it jams up. Not always the case and, of course, never a good idea to race a train. Don't race a train, but maybe you can quick shoot over to to avoid it, maybe just as it's passing on Willie or something. Yes. And we we are trained as a courtesy to uh, turn off the timer for our passengers, pause the meter, during a train stop. This one's for all the project managers, software developers, and anyone who might be looking for better ways to build teams and manage work. Don't miss out on Madison's first ever hosting of Scrum Day, a one-day conference dedicated to Scrum, the Agile Project Management Framework. Yeah, it's a rugby term, but it's for anyone who manages teams. Scrum Day is coming up on September 14th at the Alliant Energy Center. There are special breakout sessions for executives, product owners, scrum masters, and developers. Plus, activities to make growing your network easier. And you can expect top agile expert speakers, including thought leaders on Kanban. Are you ready to level up? Get inspired. Get your tickets at scrumday.org. We talked about Johnson and Gorham. Madison is known for its one-way streets. I mean, how many times have you seen people drive the wrong way down Johnson and Gorham? And isn't that a terrifying thing? It is. And I've seen it many, many times. And I, I see it quite frequently. And probably Johnson and Gorham are less frequent than some of the other smaller one-way streets where people have fewer visual cues that uh, a street's going to be a one-way. You know, the Hancocks, the Franklins, North Orchard, and uh, yeah, some of the other smaller ones. How do you stay so zen about it? Is that is that the real secret, the real driving hack is take a deep breath and don't do anything crazy? Yeah, I mean, you're just not going to save that much time by stressing yourself out over trying to get something. And, you know, I'm sure most of us have seen this before. You get the crazy type A personality driving and weaving in and out, and then they're at the same stoplight as you, or maybe they make one stoplight that you didn't. And in the long run, they're going to get there maybe 30 seconds faster than you, and it's just not worth it. It's creating a lot of hazard and a lot of stress and angering the people around them and just drive cooperatively. Makes sense you're saying that. You work for a workers' cooperative with the Union Cab. The Workers' Paradise, as we call it. <laughs> yes. Okay, you you tell me if you have noticed this as well. People are at a light, obviously, um, and, you know, if you're at the front of the light, the first car, a lot of times, man, that light turns green and nothing happens. Is that like a new phenomenon because people are checking their cell phones? Yeah, I think the cell phone in the driver's hand is uh, maybe the biggest traffic hazard out there. They're uh, staring down, and you can see the the head gesture. Some people are bold enough to just kind of hold it up by the steering wheel and, you know, drive while they're watching a movie or whatever. You see that? Oh, yeah. Speaking of sort of stressful situations, um, I mean, what construction projects are causing headaches right now? Well, I'd say University Avenue, just west of the hospital, is about the worst, and Um, It can be bad at any number of hours of the day, but there's a lot of traffic that moves through that area. 
and it seems especially worse westbound. And there are definitely ways to avoid that. Okay, how do you avoid University Avenue? Well, first of all, if you're at the University Hospital, you're just doomed, so forget it anyway. It, it's just going to take a long time. But uh, if you're going from, say, downtown to the Hilldale area or something, you take uh, Regent Street west of West High School, a right on Franklin, a left on Kendall, which turns into Bluff, and it shoots you out onto Regent Street at Midvale. Whoa, okay. So that's that's a bus route. You just follow the bus route signs. That's a good one. What else about the, I mean, I agree with you, avoid University Avenue at all costs. Is there, are there any other tricks maybe going the other way or? Um, same, same route going the other way again, you know, uh, from Midvale and Regent, Regent hits Blackhawk and shoots you up to Bluff, which turns into Kendall to Franklin to Regent. And again, you're not moving at high speeds. Uh, you're going through residential neighborhoods, so you got to drive nice, stop signs and whatnot, but you don't get stuck. It's always better to just keep moving, even if you're going a little slower. It just stinks sitting there. Well, for most of my cab career, I've been an overnight driver, and you just learn that you take the shortest distance, and it's probably going to make up for any increased speed that you can make up by going the long way. What about uh, right now, I think, Atwood Avenue? That little strip of it has been... I mean, Atwood Avenue has been a mess all year. So how do you get to Monona uh, with Atwood basically being closed? Well, you could follow the marked detours, Dylan. Oh, I could? Well, maybe, okay. Uh, I get confused over there by Walter Street. Lay it out for us, Adam. I personally take Fair Oaks to Milwaukee to Walter to John's. John's is the, the street just one block short of Atwood Avenue. But I think the key is when you're on John's, you got to realize there are people who live there. Those people have kids and pets. Stop completely at the stop signs. Do not exceed the 25 mile an hour speed limit. Pretend you live on that street and drive nice for those folks if you're going to use their street to get into the neighborhood. But that will take you all the way from Walter to Cottage Grove Road. You seem very responsible, Adam. You know, cab drivers maybe nationally or I'm thinking New York or in huge cities, they don't have a reputation for, you know, going slow and uh, making full stops. Do you think mass and cab drivers are a little bit different? I think um, most are. I mean, another thing that we're trained at is that you're driving a vehicle that's basically a big billboard. You're an advertisement for the company and our phone number is on the side of it. If you drive poorly, um, not only are you going to give us a bad reputation, but uh, a phone call might be made. I don't know. The way I'm wired, I, I really don't like to uh, make things worse for bikers, pedestrians, dog walkers, etc. I mean, do you have any particularly any favorite streets or what's do cab drivers know about any fun intersection names? I mean, probably a lot of people know on the north side, there's an intersection of Hooker and Pleasure. Oh, that's like old Madison legend right there. Margaret and Atwood intersect, which is kind of cool. That is cool. Yeah. There's a small subdivision um, uh, in southeast Madison uh, toward what most people would consider McFarland, uh, where all the streets are named after Beatles songs. Oh, I didn't know about that. Like strawberry fields and stuff. You just got to check it out, Dylan. Pull, pull out your map or take a drive. Well, I don't get to the subdivision, yeah, very often. But uh, there's a nice optical illusion on a street off of Lakeside called O'Sheridan, which is just the first street off of John Nolan there. And especially when the trees are in full bloom, there's an illusion where uh, you're traveling toward the capital, but it appears to be descending, getting farther away into the background Whoa. because of the framing of the trees and the, the hill on the road. That's kind of neat. Optical illusions. I wasn't expecting you to say that. Okay, that's on Sheridan, you said? Oh, Sheridan. Oh, with an apostrophe. Okay, oh, Sheridan headed towards the capital. Yes. Crestwood has some cool street names too, right? Yeah, there's a, a group of alphabetical street names where they're all named after trees, but they're in alphabetical order. Oh, I, what about the ones that are named after scientists and stuff? Where's that? Oh, yeah, uh, that's off of Rose Road and I guess there's some uh, controversy over the pronunciation, but we've been told that the family that owned the farm there was the Rose family, not Rosa. But yeah, Marconi is over there and Tesla and a few others like that. Uh, and what is there on the west side, uh, the far west side, um, There, there's one's named for national parks or? That's right. Which ones are those? They're between uh, Old Sauk and Mineral Point Road, just east of the west town or northeast of the west town area. All national park names. 
the ones that people drive by the most probably are Yellowstone and Grand Canyon, but there are a bunch in there that uh, that intersect them. Okay, on the north side, there's all these streets that are just named after like first names, like Randy and Susan. Do you know the deal with that? I think a lot of times when streets are named like that, there's a developer who names a few streets after his kids or something. I know that's uh, uh, over uh, Clyde Gallagher, I think. There were some streets over there, Hermina and stuff like that, that was maybe named after a child. Is there any like cab driver slang for landmarks or, or streets in Madison? Yeah, sure. Well, the corner of uh, Stone Road in East Washington, which is 51 and 151, is known as Full House Corner, a silver fives, three ones and two fives. Oh, man, that took me a second. Yeah, like a poker hand. Uh, Speedway, the street just west of West High School there, is between two cemeteries and is known as the Bowen Zone. There are others, but they're a bit more obscure. Meritor Hospital is still sometimes known as Madison General and stuff like that. Oh, cool. It's only been a few decades anyway. All right, Adam, any other just uh, messages from the cab driving community to your average driver in Madison? If you miss your turn, don't do something crazy and rash. There's another street coming up in the future, I guarantee it, and you can just make a turn, three left turns or three right turns or whatever you want. Two wrongs don't make a right, but uh, three lefts do. Well, Adam, hey, thank you for just giving us some good tips uh, about getting around town in Madison. We really appreciate it and your perspective. Thanks, Dylan, and thanks for your support. That's producer Dylan Brogan picking the brain of Adam Churn, a longtime union cab driver. And here's what else Madison's talking about. Area codes. Of course, many of you longtimers in Madison likely know Union Cab's number, 608-242-2000. It's got that ring to it. Well, our local popular 608 will soon no longer be the only rodeo in town. There's a new telephone area code for Southern Wisconsin coming next month. Three, five, three. Brace yourself. For those of you with the 608 area code, no worries, we can keep our rep. And in totally other news, criminal justice. There's an update on a high profile criminal case of a former UW Madison student. Alec Cook, now 27 years old, was convicted of multiple sexual assaults he committed while being a student at UW. 11 women accused him of assault before he was arrested back in 2016. He served three years in prison for his crimes and was released a couple years ago. But as of this past weekend, he's back in custody in Minnesota after a Minnesota judge ruled Cook a sexually dangerous person. That's all for today here on CityCast Madison. I'm Bianca Martin. If you enjoy the show, why not share this episode with that one friend who thinks they know the best route to get to the place you're running late to. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more stories from around the city. Ciao.